Well, I want to thank Mars. And the LA Times, which is the West Coast extension of the Communist Party's propaganda sheet, is blaming global warming for the Exxon Valdez oil spill uh, based on the breakup of some glacier called the Columbia Glacier and they claim that global warming caused the icebergs which caused the ship to surge which caused it to hit uh, a reef. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax because we're going to have some fun with this. Cooks! A report blaming the 1989 Exxon Valdez spill in part on global warming has generated more ridicule than alarm, renewing scrutiny over the role of liberal foundations in keeping the fading pound Exxon new social media campaign alive. The article, The Role of Melting Glacier, played in Exxon Vidal's Exxon's Biggest Disaster, earned a few hat tips from the environmental movement after appearing Thursday in the LA Times, but taunting from the climate catastrophe challengers has been merciless. Blindingly stupid. <laughs> climate change fan fiction, irrelevant and ridiculous, were among the insults hurled at the report, written by students from Columbia University School of Journalism's Energy and Environmental Reporting Project. Anyone who has ever followed the story knows that only ice, the only ice responsible for the Exxon Valdez spill would be the ice cooling in the captain's many cocktails at night, said Katie Brown of Energy and Depth, which is funded by Independent Petroleum Association of America. But for anti-Exxon campaigners, no alternative theories, alternate theories, or should we say alternative facts, are too outrageous to publish. publish. That's because they hire psychotics to do this. Anyone who's ever followed the story knows the only I, uh, not lost on critics was the project's founder left the center philanthropies, including those backed by the Rockefeller family and billionaire George Soros that made no secret of their support for climate advocacy and antipathy towards fossil fuel industry. Disclosure in the article said that the foundations that have no involvement or influence over the articles produced by Project Fells in collaboration with the LA Times, but not everyone was buying it. I would hope not. The LA Times is really ramping up fake news with this Rockefeller and Soros founded article seeking to blame global warming from 1989 Exxon Valdez, says Mark Morano. Publisher of Skeptics website Climate Depot. It's because they're kooks. The story suggested that Exxon should have known that Columbia Glacier had become unstable as a result of global warming, increasing the risk of iceberg hazards. Before the Exxon Valdez crashed in Alaska's Bly Reef after swerving to avoid an iceberg. Uh, for what was triggering the glacier to drop icebergs at such a ferocious and ultimately disastrous pace was unclear at the time, said the article, but some scientists even then were beginning to look at climate change's role. So, okay, let's take a look at the LA Times article that they're uh, referencing. Didn't take me long to find it. Now, here are the names of the kooks. Dino Grandoni, Ace of Charlie, Michael Phyllis, Susan Rust. Can't make those names up. In the wee hours of March 24, 1989, Channel Connecting the Alaskan port of Valdez with Prince William Sound was riddled with icebergs shoved from deteriorating Columbia Glacier, a massive river of ice had begun breaking apart only a few years earlier with an inexperienced third mate guiding a massive oil-laden tanker 
The Exxon Valdez were Darvis designated shipping lane to avoid the ice. It was a standard maneuver carried out hundreds of times before. But this time, on this night, 4th Third made the correct course. Tanker careened into the rocky outcroppings of Wide Reef, where it ultimately released, released roughly 11 million gallons of crude oil into the waters of Prince William Sound. That was such a catastrophe that such a catastrophe what might happen was not news to the company. You mean they didn't you mean that's some kind of news that an oil tanker could have a problem run into a reef? <laughs> Gee whiz. Uh talk about staying obvious. Beginning in 1975, the USGS warned Exxon and investors in Trans Alaska Pipeline System, including companies now part of BP and Conoco Phillips, that the glacier was becoming unstable. What was triggering glacier drop icebergs at such a ferocious and ultimately disastrous pace was unclear at the time. Some scientists even then were beginning to look at climate change's role. In 1978, a news article in the scientific journal Nature reported that USGS was concerned that the glacier could, as a result of clim changing climate conditions, experience a drastic retreat, which might result in a major hazard to shipping. Similar accounts of the USGS warnings appeared in the LA Times and Time magazine, among others. So, they're blaming, you know, they're clearly blaming global warming instead of a defective pilot who uh, ran the ship aground. And this good an iceberg. What was that big ship that uh, was sunk by an iceberg? Well, now they're saying it was sunk by uh, fire. That would be the Titanic. Duh. That happened how long ago? While well, glaciers retreat and grow and retreat over decades and centuries, most of the plants and the glaciers are now shrinking at unprecedented rates, being the scientists conclude with confidence in the climate change. Changing climate is culprit. There is no question now that climate change is responsible for both an initial breakup of the glacier due to decreased precipitation in the region and its continued treatment due to higher global temperatures, said Wendell Tang, born a retired USGS geologist, who studied the Columbia Glacier in the 1980s and 90s. And this goes on and on. Uh... Well, the LA Times is a true snake in the grass. Now they're saying that what comes out of your uh, car's tailpipe is to blame for the Exxon Valdez spill. In that sense, that's what they're saying. Because these are anti-capitalists. Like I said, the LA Times is the West Coast major extension of the U.S. Communist Party's propaganda sheet. May I should say propaganda guide. It's just another part of it. Just as the New York Times is the East Coast extension of the U.S. Communist Party's propaganda guide. These are communists. They're also psychotics. Uh, so many of these newspapers uh, hire these wacko psychotics uh, to run their. Uh, stuff, and I think that's just unconscionable that they're letting these psychotics out of the uh, mental hospitals and then they wind up making big bucks for these leftist newspapers. And here's some pictures from the film including that poor bird.
the trail. The trail led to the Exxon Valdez disaster began in 1968 when Humble Oil, one of two companies that would eventually consolidate the form Exxon, discovered a massive reservoir of crude oil in the Alaskan Arctic. To get some of those 25 million billion, 25 billion barrels to customers in California and elsewhere in the western United States, Exxon and its co-investors joined forces to build an 800 mile long pipeline stretching from oil field in Prudhoe Bay to the port of Valdez. This pipeline has uh, actually helped the environment because it provides well, they found, I think it's a caribou, um, born, breed better and they have higher birth rates because they have warmth from the pipeline. Remember, the soil that comes out of the ground is warm. And it has helped the wildlife there. But you know, I hear these wacko nutcases say that. I'm going a little long here. I hope you enjoyed this. These are, remember, these are psychotics. They are, they are psychotic leftists, basically. And they do deserve to be scorned. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for watching.